Hello and what's up to you all, Grade 11 Minds. It is Premier Kieland. Welcome to it. This is your favorite show, the best learning show ever with me, Abram and John. How are you, John? I'm really good. Thanks for being here, Abram. And good afternoon to you, Grade 11s. Uh, it's been a while and it's my pleasure to be with you this afternoon. We're going to be doing some really exciting stuff and I hope you'll join me. Uh, this is the core of mechanics that we're looking at today, Newton's laws, and particularly Newton's second law. So, Abram, I'm really psyched to be here. You happy? I am, and I just want to know from the mindset is how was your day at school? Are you ready to learn more with us? Share that on facebook.com forward slash Lenextra or tweet us at Lenextra. Follow us and let all your friends know that we are on Lenextra together. And lastly, download your notes all for free at len.mindset.co.za. Interesting stuff about the notes. There's a test yourself question. That's right, Abram. Now, uh, guys, if you get a little bit confused with downloading notes and so on, I, I want to make it easy for you. Abram's made it really easy. You go on to Facebook and he's posted some stuff. So I just want to show it to you to make sure you've got it. Because I don't want to, you to miss out with the notes. I don't want you to miss out with the test yourself question. So uh, let's have a quick look at where we are. I just want to refresh over here. You will see on your Facebook page that says learn extra like this. And let's give it a second or two. First thing that you need to know is that here's your challenge question. It's on the page already. It's waiting for you, for you to start thinking about, and you can start posting your answers as comments below here. Now, if I go a little bit further down, uh, it looks like we're having a little bit of a challenge. Abram's going to get it up shortly. There'll be a link to the notes as well as a link to where you can answer the test yourself question. Now, this is what happens. You'll get a little bit, I'll show you what it looks like on the grade 10. If you can refresh, it's done. Is it done? Yes. Abram, I'm trusting you. Please. Let's hope that it goes together. Hold on. Is Facebook up to speed? Let's see. There you go. And the first thing that you can see is there's your notes. So if you click on that bitly, there come the notes, and the notes are there for you. It doesn't look like that's the right one, though. So, Abram, please correct that. It's not the right note. That was last week's note. Make sure that it's the right note, please. The second thing that's the most important one is the code, which I'm just going to hold there, which opens up for the test yourself. Now, to test yourself, all we want you to do is put your name in, your email address, contact number, grade, the subject that you're answering, who's presenting. It's Abram and myself, John, with you this evening. And then you can fill in the answers to the question. Question 1 to 10, there'll never be more than 10 questions. If it's numbered differently, then just fill it in the space there. Type it in. You can do this on your mobile, or you can do it on a PC or a tablet. Let's see if you are up to winning the airtime. Awesome. And it's great airtime, eh? Yes. 110 Rand. Yeah, it's a lot, John. Tell you what, we have a winner from yesterday's show, and the winner is Bongiwe Nkosi. Congratulations to you, Bongiwe. And you'll call all your friends and let us know if you got your airtime and share. Okay, absolutely. <laughs> and share what you're doing on Facebook as well. Share the notes, share the links, help other mindsetters use your airtime rightly. Awesome. And get on the challenge question also. It's already posted as John has said. Excellent. Guys, let's get ready now. We're getting into the science now. So let's have a look. We're dealing with Newton's second law of motion, sometimes just called Newton's second law. And today, this is what we really want to investigate. And it's, it's a very interesting question. We want to investigate the relationship between force and motion. We want to see what makes things move. Now, Abram, here's a trick question. It's one that I want the mindsetters out there to think about, but I want you to think about. If something is moving, does it mean that there are forces acting on the object? Yes, of course. You think so? Yes. Uh, most well, definitely. we're going to have to have a look <laughs> at it. Um, maybe, yeah, we'll have to refine that, that a little bit. We're going to talk about it. To get something to move, do we need to apply a force? Again, I want you to think about it. What does force do 
in terms of moving an object. Last week, when TK was here, he spoke about when objects are in equilibrium and they have a zero resultant. That means all the forces balance each other out. And what state were they in? We're going to have to revise that and look at it. So we're going to have a, a careful investigation with that. Then once we've established those things, we're going to revise how to apply Newton's laws, mainly Newton's second law, but also Newton's first law and third law. We'll revise those if we've got time. Uh, uh, of motion to different situations. And guys, the more situations you look at, the more interesting situations you, the more confident you will become, and the easier the exam at the end of the year will be. Okay, so let's move on. Before we get to that, I want to bring those learners that don't, aren't on Facebook up to speed with the challenge question. And here is an amazing thing. Abby, I want you to pay attention as well. Because what it says is a learner, some or a young person like you, a mass of 72 kilograms. That's not too big, not too small. Okay, Young guy, he wants to investigate what will happen to the reading on his bathroom scale. I don't know why he wants to do this, <laughs> but he's wanting to see what's going to happen. Does the scale always read the same? Maybe he's got a bet going with his, his sort of valentine person. Uh, <laughs> that the scale doesn't always read the same. Well, that might be something for you to look at. The scale doesn't always read the same. And he's doing this while he's in an elevator of a tall building. So uh, if you're in the city, you'll find that there are some buildings that have got stairs up them. Some have got these uh, boxes that are strung on cables that move up and down. We call them elevators or lifts. Those of you that are, are out there in the rural areas, you might not have seen one of these things. But here's the opportunity. Think about it. Very tall building. You don't want to be running up the stairs all the time. Um, but you want to be able to use a mechanical device. They've got big, powerful motors on, and they lift these uh, people up and down. Um, so what we have to do is we have, are told we must describe the motion of the young man who's in the lift, when the scale reads as follows, it reads 72 kilograms. Does that seem a, a, a right answer? He's standing on the lift. He has a mass of 72 kilograms, and the scale reads 72. No. Does that seem right? No to me. No. No, John. Ah, I don't know. No, John. Uh, Amy, <laughs> you're looking for tricks. Uh, does this one seem possible? Maybe. That, that he's, he, he actually only weighs, has a mass... Of 72, but the, the scale is reading 83. Hey, what's happening, guys? <laughs> and then in this situation, the scale is reading 68 kilograms. But he only weighs 72. Why is this? Why is the scale reading different? Okay, guys, the answer is in Newton's second law. And I want you to think about it, try it, and see if you can explain what is happening. Describe, in a couple of words, what's happening to the guy standing in the lift. Because whatever's happening to the lift is happening to the guy. If the lift is going up, then what would we say? The guy's going up. Okay? If the lift is going down, then the guy's going down. Okay. So there's your challenge question. Not too difficult, but all of these are possible. These are all possible answers. Don't listen to AD. <laughs> 72 is a possible reading. 83 is a possible reading. And so is 68 a possible reading. Okay. So guys, chat about it. Help each other out. Give, give some suggestions. I'd like to hear from you during the break. So now let's just tie things together. We've got a few more minutes before we go to a break. I want to do this investigation. What's the relationship between forces and motion? Before we get there, to really understand this, we need to get the terminology right. This is quick revision of grade 10 work. So you should know this, and it's work that we've done. We always talk about motion as a change in position. The other word for that is displacement. The symbol for displacement is either delta x when it's horizontal or delta y. 
And when we're calculating change in position, we take the final position minus the initial position, and we work out the difference. Remember, the change in position is a vector. And vectors mean that direction matters. So you've got to be very clear. What's the positive direction? What's the negative direction? Make sure you take note of that. Then velocity. Velocity, it has a symbol V, and we say that velocity is a vector. Yes, it's a vector, and it's equal to the change in position over the change in time. So a short way of saying that, it's the rate of change of position. Vector, because it only deals with the final position minus the initial position divided by the time. So, if we had to run around an athletics track, and the start position and the end position were exactly the same, then our velocity would be zero, because the change in position is zero. Please make sure that you've got that. It's different to distance. It's different to speed. Make sure you understand that speed and distance are scalars, whereas change in position or displacement and velocity are vectors. Now, this next one. Oh, there was one other thing I wanted to say. There are different types of velocity. Velocity we need to understand. You can get constant velocity. And they sometimes call it uniform motion. Uniform. Uniform, it's all the same. I'm doing the same thing in the same time, every time interval. I'm covering the same change in position every time. So uniform motion, constant velocity. There's another word that we talk about is average velocity. And that means that we're going to take the final velocity plus the initial velocity divided by 2. Or we can talk about, very important, instantaneous, instantaneous velocity. Now what do you think that means? Instantaneous? At an instant. At a moment in time. Exactly as the clock goes to 10 seconds past. That's the velocity you're wanting. Okay, acceleration is simply the change in velocity over the change in time, or the rate of change of velocity. Now guys, what you've got to grasp here and understand is that in terms of the grade 11 work and in terms of work that we do at school, velocity is all, uh, acceleration is always constant. You won't get a changing acceleration. Acceleration is always constant. That means it's not going to change. Right. Doesn't mean that velocity doesn't going to change. If we've got a positive acceleration, it means the velocity is increasing. If we've got a negative acceleration, it means that there are two possibilities. It means that it's increasing in the negative direction or it's decreasing in the positive direction. We'll come to those when we deal with some problems. Now, Here's the practical investigation. Another question on the help desk from somebody said, please just quickly go over the experiment. And that's what I want to do here. So when you're doing an investigation into seeing how forces and motion interact, what's the relationship between acceleration and force? Then we do this experiment. We take a slope, a, a, a slope that is inclined. The reason is that to overcome friction. Overcome friction. They sometimes say a friction compensated track, which means that if we didn't hold this um, trolley, link it to anything, we just allowed it to roll down the track, it would roll down at constant velocity. Velocity would be constant. It's not going to sit, it's just going to move down at a certain speed and it's going to be constant. If it sits, it's the frictional force is too big. It's just at that moment that it's going to move constantly. Now, if it moves constantly and we attach this thing here, and there's a little hammer there that makes a mark on this tape, it's a piece of paper, we call that a ticker timer, then the type of re readings you'll get is 
a regular interval. Every time the hammer goes up and down, that's one time interval. That's T1. This is T2. And depends on how quickly it's moving up and down, depends on, on how close the dots will be together. This is a set distance. That distance will be the same as this distance, will be the same as that distance, will be the same as that distance, will be the same as any of those distances. This even distribution of dots is called constant velocity. Okay? However, when we attach a piece of a mass piece to this and a string that goes over a pulley, then it's no longer constant velocity. Please note. It's going to be changing velocity. So once we attach it like that, it's now going to experience acceleration. It's going to experience an acceleration. And what it will look like on the ticket tape is the little dots will be close together to start with because they're moving slowly. And then the distance increases. Notice that distance has increased. The time is the same, but the distance has increased. And it's getting more. And it's getting more. Every time interval, the distance increases. Now, for it to be uniform acceleration, the amount of increase will be the same every time. I just plotted that so you can see it and understand it and have an idea. Last point for this experiment. If we were doing this particular experiment, what we would have to do is we'd have to say to ourselves, we're going to look at the acceleration and compare the relationship between acceleration and resultant force. The resultant force is the force that's causing this thing to move. The important thing here is that mass must be constant. So, if we're wanting to change the force, the only way that we can change the force is to take some mass pieces off of here and load them onto there. And in that way, we'll keep the mass of the system constant. We'll change the force, and we'll see how the acceleration changes. What Newton found, and what we can verify doing this experiment, that the acceleration is directly proportional to the net force. You can go and read the statement of Newton's second law in the notes. Make sure you understand that the acceleration is always in the same direction as the net force, and it's directly proportional. It's inversely proportional to the mass. That's enough for now. AB, thank let's you. get on. Thank you, John. And a big shout out to all the mindsets that are watching and chatting on the page, such as Mobile Dube, Mukove, our mindset, Katle Mashilo Muyama, and Daniel Kanyiji. Thank you so much, guys. And remember, you post your answers for the challenge question on the post that is posted on Facebook. And test yourself because you might win that awesome voucher proudly sponsored by Vodacom. See you after this break. Welcome back, Mindsetters. If you just joined us now, you're a bit late, but you can still catch up. We are doing one of your favorite subjects, of course, because it is Physical Sciences with John and Abram. Do the test yourself questions, submit your answers on the post, on the, on the link that is posted on Facebook, and you could stand that chance of winning an awesome airtime voucher. John? Maybe thank you so much. Guys, we've had a bit of a summary of this relationship between force and acceleration and motion now let's get into the the questions make sure you've got your notes and guys get your notes early so you can try these problems so that when we're going through them you are comfortable you can check your answers okay let's get to those notes right away so the first question that we've got says a box with a mass of 60 kilograms is pulled along a rough floor, important, by a boy exerting a force of 120 newtons. So there's a little diagram they're giving, making it easy. So there's the force applied. I'm just going to call it force applied, APP. And there we've got the mass of the box, which is 60 kilograms. But we were told that there's a rough floor. As soon as I see that word rough floor or rough surface, or even through mud, or over a carpet, or over stone. 
then I must be thinking that there's a frictional force involved. Okay? I cannot not think of friction unless it specifically says on a frictionless surface. Okay? So on this diagram for myself, I'm going to say that I will draw in a frictionless surface. Now notice a, a frictional force. And I'm saying it's, op it's acting in the opposite direction to the applied force. The applied force is to the right. The frictional force always opposes motion. Now let's have a look and see what the question's actually asking us to do. I was just interpreting the information there. It says draw a force diagram to show all the forces acting on the box and label the forces. Now guys, in this question, we've got to be really careful because we've got to apply all of Newton's laws, not just Newton's second law. So I'm going to draw the force diagram underneath here and we're going to come to it. I'm going to draw the box as a dot almost like a free body diagram. And the first force that I know is definitely exerting is the force of the, applica the, of the boy, the applied force. And we're going to say that that's 120 newtons. Then the other force that I know that's definitely exerted is the force due to gravity. And this is Fg, which is equal to the mass of the box times the um, acceleration due to gravity mg and we can work it out it's 60 kilograms times 9,8 and if we use our calculator over here let's move it to that side we get 60 uh, turn that ink off for a minute and we get 60 it needs to go 60, uh, there we go, let's do it again, 60 multiplied by 9.8 equals 588. So 588 is my answer that I'm looking for, 588, and that's Newton's. Now, there is another important force. If the force downwards is 588, then we know that on the earth, very important to notice this. The box will be pulling the earth upwards at 588. Those would be the pair of forces that we are call the action and reaction pair, or we call them the pair of forces from Newton's third law. But from our discussion on friction, we know that there is another force that is acting on this box, and we call it the normal force. Now, in this case, the normal force is the force of the surface acting on the box. And what we do know is that the normal force is the same magnitude as the force downwards. It is not a Newton 3 pair. It's not a Newton 3 pair. Please note, take note of that. The box pushes down on the surface, and the surface pushes up on the box. The uh, earth pulls down on the box, and the box pulls up on the... Those are the pairs. Make sure you've got the bodies correct. We'll revise, if we've got some time, Newton's third law at the end. And the last little force that we want to consider is the force of friction. And we don't know what that is. And we'll just call it the frictional force. The reason we know it's there because it said it was a rough surface. The frictional force. Okay. So guys, there's our force diagram. It's showing all the forces and we've labeled them. We must understand what these forces are. We must be able to apply, interpret exactly what's going on. So I'm just going to make sure that we understand that that force and that force are equal to each other. So really, when we're talking about this object moving and across the surface, we're only interested in those. So when we ask the next question, which was to calculate the magnitude of the frictional force caused by the floor if the uh, acceleration of the box is 1,5 meters per second, then the only forces that we're going to be looking at 
are the ones that are in the horizontal. We're going to separate it and say, we're wanting to look at the horizontal forces. And if we've got a frictional force to the one side and an applied force to the other side, what's the overall result? Well, we call that the resultant or the F net. The resultant or F net. And Newton's second law tells us that because the acceleration is directly proportional to the force, we can write the resultant or the F net is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Now, guys, I want you to understand that F net is not some introductory fairy force that comes in from the aliens. Okay? It is not an imaginary force. It is this force here, this one, plus that one. If we add those two together, then we're going to get F net. So on my diagram, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the direction to the right is positive. And I'm going to apply that sign convention. And I'm going to say, let me find out what the horizontal forces are. They are the force of friction plus the force applied. And I'm going to say that's equal to the mass times the acceleration. But remember that to the right is positive. So if we look at this, what we're going to recognize is that from Newton's second law, the acceleration is in the direction of the net force. We recognize that the applied force, in this case, the applied force will always be bigger than the frictional force. So the acceleration is also in that direction. So the acceleration is positive. The only thing that is going to be negative is the frictional force. So we're going to say we expect the frictional force to be a negative less than zero. Now let's substitute some values in and let's see how we go. And we're going to say we don't know what frictional force is. We know what the applied force. It was a positive 120. We know what the mass is. It's 60. We know the acceleration is positive. Mass doesn't have direction. It's a scalar. 1 comma 5. Let me just redo that. 1 comma 5 meters per second per second. We multiply that together and we'll get this is 90. Now I want F, ne F of friction on its own. So what am I going to do? I'm going to subtract the 120. So I'm going to subtract that from both sides and I get minus 120. And the end result is that I can say the force of friction is negative 30 newtons. Can I leave it there? Guys, no. You must never leave an answer with a negative sign in front of it or a positive sign. You can't leave a vector without describing the direction. So we must interpret this. We must say, therefore, we can say the frictional force is 30 newtons in the opposite direction to the applied force. The reason I didn't say left and right was because they didn't tell me in the diagram that it was to the left or right. They drew the diagram, yes, and I might be okay, but not every time. So what we need to say, it's in the opposite direction to the motion or the opposite direction to the applied force or the opposite direction to the acceleration. Please be very specific. Um, if they tell you that it's traveling north, then you know that the direction of the force will be to the south and so on. Okay. Abby, we're going on to the next question. So let's have a look at it. This one is a little bit tougher, and it's a typical exam type question. So I want you to pay very careful attention. Don't get lost and don't get hung up and say, I don't want to do this. No, you guys, you can manage this. This is not that difficult. And after you've done a couple, you'll understand that you can do them. So it's all about confidence, and it's all about making sure that we've got it right. So let's read it. Let's make sure we've got it right. A force of 10 newtons uh, is uh, used to pull dynamics, uh, dynamics trolley A along a frictional uh, horizontal force. The trolley A is attached by a light, non-elastic string to trolley B. So there we go. Trolley A 
has a mass of 1 kilogram and trolley B has a mass of 500 grams. First thing they're going to ask us is to calculate the acceleration of trolley A. So let's just make sure that we've got our, our detail correct. That's A and that's B. And we want to calculate the acceleration of trolley A. Then they ask for the tension of the in the string that joins trolley A to trolley B. So they want this tension. Now, something interesting about tension is that the tension in a string will be the same at either end. Okay? What we've got to do with this sort of problem, we've got two objects. So we've first of all got to decide our direction, and then we've got to draw some diagrams. So I'm going to start right there. And I'm going to start by saying... Let's have a look at trolley A. And I'm not a very good artist, so I'm going to call that A. And I'm going to say, what are the forces on trolley A? And trolley A has a force exerted, which was the applied force, which was equal to 10 newtons. It then had another force, the force of the tension of the string pulling on it like that. If I now look at trolley B, and I want to change the color of my pen, and I'm going to look at B. We, assuming that this was a frictionless surface and we're not having any friction, we're going to say that the force on B was only to the right and it was the frictional, it was the force of tension. So let me just correct that. It's the force of tension applied in the opposite direction. Now remember that what we've now got to look at is what's the net force? What's the expression for net force? We can say the net force on A is its mass times its acceleration. And the net force on B is going to be its mass times its acceleration. We can work these one at a time or we can work them uh, together. I'm now going to, having set them up, I'm going to set up the equations, then I'm going to do the calculations individually. So what is the net force acting on A? Well, I hope you can see if we define to the right as positive, and that means to the left is negative, that we're going to say that it's force plus the, uh, the t force of tension. That's what the net force is. We're adding those vectors as vectors is equal to the mass times the acceleration. And over here, what are the forces on, the, on B? This is B, object B. What's the net force on B? Well, it's simply the force of tension. And that's equal to its mass times its acceleration. Now, guys, the important thing here is that if A is traveling at a certain acceleration, then B will have the same acceleration. Okay? You, that's why they linked with the string. You can't have different parts of the same system accelerating differently. They're together. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to substitute some numbers in here, and I'm going to see if I can uh, resolve these equations and join them together simultaneously. So the first, the only thing that I know is that this is 10, and I know that the force of tension is going to be a negative force. So I'm going to make sure that I understand that that's going to be a subtraction. It's going to be, I'm going to subtract that uh, force of tension from there. Uh, because the force is applied in the positive direction, the force of tension is in the negative direction. Now, we, don't, we know the mass over here was, let's just check the question. The mass of A is one kilogram. And the mass of B is half a kilogram. So this is 1 times A. And this, we don't know. But this is the mass times 0, 4. Uh, sorry, this is the, ma the acceleration we don't know. The mass is half. And the acceleration is A. Now, I'm going to combine those two. And I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to say, write this one up at the top. Ft is equal to A. And I'm going to write the second one. Ft is equal to 0, 
comma 5a. Now look at this. This is really interesting. You can, sub, you can do it a different method. This method is by elimination and by adding. If you set up your questions correctly, you've used your correct signs, then you, what you'll do, be able to do is add the two together and the FT will cancel out. So when I add this together, I'll get 10. I will get this one being 0 here. So 10 is equal to 1,5a. Now, to get my answer, what I need to do is I need to therefore say a is equal to 10 divided by 1,5. And if I go to the calculator, just clear it. I'm going to go to 10 divided by 1,5. And I get an answer of 6,67, which is equal to 6 comma 67 meters per second per second and notice that I need to say w if it said magnitude no it didn't it said calculate the acceleration and I must say in the direction of the applied force because that's where it was in the positive direction in the direction of the applied force okay Right, let's have a look at the last part because this is really the interesting part. How are we going to find tension? Well, we're halfway there. Not even. We're more than halfway there. We've got acceleration. Notice that we've got two equations. We've got this equation over here and we've got this equation over here that, till, that both have an FT missing. You can check this by substituting the values in. I'm going to do it very quickly. I'm just going to say, I'm going to use this equation, and I'm going to use the acceleration I was given. I'm going to say, therefore, Ft is equal to uh, 0, 0,5 times the acceleration, which was 6,67. And if I'd used the calculator to do that, just multiply this by... 0, 0,5 times 6,67. Uh, it's not done it properly. Let's just do this again. Uh, multiply equals, and we get an answer of 3,35. I'm going to round that up, uh, up to 3,34. So my answer for my my tension is 3,34 newtons. In which direction? Well, if it's acting, it depends. It acts because it's in the rope. It acts on B to the one side and on A to the other. Okay. AB? Yes. Thank I you so much, John. Uh, the mindset is I have great questions, which we'll take a little later on. Keep them coming on facebook.com forward slash land extra. And that challenge question will be answered shortly. So if you, you haven't tried it, try it out now. See you after this break. Welcome back, awesome minds. It is now, it is that time where we get to see the right answer on the challenge question, whether it's A, B, or C, because I think it's either A or B or C. What do you think, John? A, B. <laughs> a, okay, B. It's a or B. No, a, B. it's both. It's all three. You didn't a read the question. Oh, oh, How many times have you been in one of those accounting <laughs> lessons when Ashraf says, read the full Question. But I don't want to so give away the right no, no, answer. No, 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 AB. Come. What does it say? It describes the motion of the young man when the scale reads 72 kilograms. So we need to give an answer for what's happening when it's 72 kilograms. Not is it going to be 72? I know, or John. Is it going this to is be so easy, John. Oh, okay, then tell me what the mindset is saying. Okay, most Wh mindsets uh, think like me. There's no motion. I think the, ah, the lens is just there. Okay, oh, wait a minute. We've got to be careful here, guys. What we've got to say is if it's equal to 72, then let's draw a little picture. And the picture that we're going to draw is there's the man and there's the force of gravity. 
force due to gravity, and there's the upward force on the scale. Uh, and what we can say is that these two are equal to each other, the force up, okay? Which is the surface force of the scale. It's actually the reading of the scale pushing up on us. What we're saying is these two are equal to each other, and that means that the scale is going to read correctly. It's going to read 72 kilograms. Uh, it only happens because F net is zero newtons. Okay? You're not moving. Now, there are two times that F net can be zero. That means that the velocity is zero, or the other case is when the velocity is constant. Let me remind you, Newton's first law says an object will remain at rest or at constant velocity unless acted on by a, an external force, an unbalanced force, they sometimes say. But it's an external force that's not going to be given. It's not, in other words, Newton's first law, Newton 1, you can summarize it. You can summarize it like this. You can say F net is zero, which means that the initial velocity is equal to the final velocity. When there's no acceleration, then initial velocity is equal to final velocity. The object will stay where it is. It will stay doing what it is. And right at the beginning, remember I said to you, what's the relationship between force and motion? This is a classic example. An object can be moving, just not accelerating, if all the forces are, are balanced out. They, the total resultant, the net force is zero. It will have a constant velocity. Guys, very important. Okay. Now, the next thing is... How does this happen? How does it happen that the guys now suddenly w uh, has a measure of 83 kilograms? Well, there's an upward force, and we sometimes look at this like the tension in the, the scale. Okay? The upward force is greater than the downward force. This force which we could call tension or the, the reading on the scale. This one is bigger. It's bigger than what it normally is. It's pushing up. It's the spring that's, that's greater. It's not balanced. And what we find here, this happens when we have an acceleration that is upwards. Now, to describe the motion, what you need to understand, what does that mean? If it's accelerating upwards, it can be taking off from the ground floor, and it can suddenly be speeding up. So it can be traveling upwards and speeding up. Okay, It's getting faster and faster going upwards. So I want you to understand that upwards acceleration means can mean two things. It m can be speeding up, getting faster and faster in the upward direction, or it can mean the following. It can mean, if you think about this, if something is pulling up stronger, that stronger force pulling up could be slowing the object down. So the acceleration could be upwards, but it could be slowing down. In other words, braking, but moving down, moving in the opposite direction. Okay, that's a little bit tough. But if you think about it, as you are moving upwards, what's happening? The floor is pushing you up, and you are pushing down, and it pushes more on the spring. So as the sp scale moves up, you're pushing down more and more. Okay, so there's a bigger force on the, on the scale, the springs of the bathroom scale. The last one. Why is it less? Now, I hope you've got this. I hope you've got this. Because you see, we've done, three we've done three cases. The one case was when they were equal. This case was then when the force upwards was greater than the force downwards. So guess what's happening? Next, we're going to make the force downwards 
to be bigger than the force upwards. So in which direction is the acceleration now? If the force up is smaller than the force down, in other words, Fg is greater than Ft, then what can we say? The acceleration is downwards. When do we get a downwards acceleration? Think about it. I hope you've got it. It means it's getting faster and faster moving downwards. Or it's getting slower and slower while moving upwards. It's breaking while moving upwards. Okay. So think about that very carefully and make sure that you understand these type of problems. They come up really often. Make sure you take them and see if you can calculate the accelerations as well. You've got all the information you need, and there's question three in the notes as well. If we don't get a time to do it, you have a look at it. Abby, I think it's time to take a few questions. If we've got a few minutes, I think we have. Yes, we do. Um, let's take the first one from, uh, from Zanele Naledi. Uh, hello, I'm Zanele Kanyele, all the way from... Zim? No, Joanne. Durban? Okay. No, the President's Palace from Inkandla. Inkandla! <laughs> Welcome! <laughs> can I ask that when the motion is in one dimension or in a straight line, we can say that the motion I in one direction is positive and that the motion in the opposite direction is negative? That's correct. Absolutely. So we're dealing with one dimensional motion. So the direction, we decide what that direction, which is positive and which is negative. But what we're recognizing is that if the positive direction is to the right, then the negative direction will be to the left. If up is positive, then down will be negative. Okay. Please make sure when you read your problem, you make sure that you've got up and down, left and right, horizontal and vertical separated. Okay. Awesome. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions based on question two. Yeah, we Ye would do. Yeah, here's one from Sanele. In question two, where did you get the 1,5? I'm lost. I saw 0 0.5. Okay. Guys, please don't forget that there's a, a mystery invisible one here. Because if we have A plus a half A, then you're going to get 1.5 A. Okay? So... I just didn't write that one in there because there was no need for it. It, uh, it didn't require it. We had it over here. I multiplied it out. One times A gives me A. Half times A gives me half A. When we add the two together, we get one and a half A. Um, if I can just make that half a little bit better, um, then it might help us to see it. So that should be 0, 0,5. And hopefully, there's nobody confused about that anymore. Okay, still on the same question, Tawo is asking, how did you get rid of the FT to find the acceleration as 6.67? Okay, 67? have a look here. It's a very good question. There are different ways of doing it. This is the easiest way. If you set up your equations correctly, and you eliminate, you add the two equations together, you will always get rid of the FT. And that's exactly what I've done. This was a negative FT. This was a positive FT. So they cancel each other out. We added them together. Okay, thank you. Hope you answered. Last one for today. Uh, Tobey, Tobejan, why on question one point B, when you calculated the F net, you added the force applied with the friction force. But on question two, you did the opposite by subtracting. Uh, because I, th these were different directions. So we, we, we keep the, the vector... Uh, we're adding the vectors here, and uh, we kept the sign. This was the sign of the vector here. We added them, but we were just applying the sign rule. So this was a positive because it's in the positive direction. We said that the force in the second one was a negative. We defined the, f the, f the direction as being negative. So that's why this is a negative force here because it's in the opposite direction. Okay. Awesome. Good. Unfortunately, we have to end it there today. Uh, really, guys, it's been great being with you. I'm sure we'll see you again soon. Thank you so much, my sisters, and all the best for the competition. Keep your test yourself answers coming on the link that is posted on Facebook. But for today, me and John just want to say, we're leaving you in peace.